So a very fun fact about software engineering is that you will very rarely use 90% of software engineering design patterns, except in tiered architecture. Sometimes this is referred to as the repository pattern. And luckily for us, the repository pattern, AKA in tiered architecture is very easy to understand because it only has three parts. And we are going to be building these three parts in the next couple of videos. Let's not get too carried away. Let's just focus on what we are building right now. We are going to be building the repository. As you notice, the repository is the closest to the database. Repository is very simple because the repository class is only going to have crud methods. It's only going to have very specific methods to get specific tables out of your database, in this case for our club, and then turn them into object. The whole entire idea behind the repository is to perform crud actions and turn database tables into objects so that they can travel through your services, travel through your controllers, and then be displayed onto a web page. Another thing is that Java makes it incredibly easy for us by just giving us a very fancy interface so that we can quickly get all of these create, update, delete methods straight off the bat and then everything is plugged in. But it doesn't just stop there. You can also just type your very own methods and put in individual field titles from your actual POCO, put them in inside of your interface as a custom query, and it will automatically generate the necessary code for you so that you can do things like find by title or find by content. And literally what will happen is Java will find this actual field, convert it into actual code, and you don't have to do any actual coding. This is called a custom query method. We'll talk about this in a later video, but I'll give you guys a simple example here in a second when we implement this repository right now. Okay, so let's go ahead in here and let's implement our repository. The first thing that we want to do is we just want to create another folder and go to package, and I'm going to call this repository. Okay, so now that we have our folder, we can correctly organize everything, and I'm going to go into here and call this a club repository because we are making running clubs. You could make this about any type of club. You could make it like a gamer club or you could make it a, a hiker club or something. And it's going to be an actual interface. I accidentally called this a class. So I'm just going to call this an interface. Just change it really quickly. And IntelliSense will let you know that you did that by giving it an I right here. And it's going to, since it's an interface, we're going to extend the JPA repository. Here we need to put in the entity, remember that each repository has to have its own entity, and we're going to get put in our club right here. This is pretty much it, but I think I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't tell you about custom query methods. In our club, we have a title, we have a photo URL, we have a content. You may have noticed this already. Sometimes you will see a piece of code in a repository that looks like this, and you can't really find where this code is coming from. And you'll see things like find by title, and you can pass in a string, and you will see lots of methods in here that seemingly come from nowhere. These are custom query methods. And what this basically does is Java finds the property inside of the actual club or the model, and it creates this actual piece of code for you. So we can now actually use this code in other places in our application, and it will automatically find the title for us based off of the field in our method. So we could also put um, photo URL, and we could add all types of crazy constraints to it, and we could put it in descending and um, not descending. So we can have photo URL and we can have, we, you know, and content and content containing, and you could do all these crazy things. We're not going to really do that because that's a little over the top, but you know, you get the picture. So we've already got our repository made. Now what we need to do is we need to create our very first DTO. Let's talk a little bit about DTOs and where DTOs come from. Why do we even need DTOs? The biggest reason that people are going to be using DTOs is because they don't want all of the information to be either flowing through the app or to be shown to the users. Let's just say in a crazy world, we have a private string here. So we let's just say uh, we have a private string password right here. And this is in our club model. This is just the actual model that we have in here. 
Well, what a DTO is going to do is make it so that you can return specific fields, can return specific information. Let's just say you don't want to have this password here and you want to return just this content to the user. What you would make is what's called a DTO because a lot of times your models will become so big that a DTO can number one, provide you security and it can also provide convenience because you don't want all these fields floating around in your app. A lot of times you want a specific object for a specific use case and a DTO helps you compartmentalize and in a sense encapsulate a lot of this data so that it's not just floating around willy nilly in your app. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go back into IntelliJ and we are going to create our first DTO. So what I'm gonna do here, and I'm not gonna create a class, I'm going to create a package and I'm gonna call these, I'm just gonna call this the DTO package and I'm going to create a club DTO. We're not actually going to hook this DTO up to a database and you will notice that we don't have the entity notation that we have in our actual model. A model and a club are very similar, but also different in a lot of ways. This one has an entity and it's actually being persisted into our database. A club DTO is not doing that, although it does look very similar to our actual club. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna go builder, these are just Lombok patterns, though these don't have anything to do with it. And I'm also going to just bring all of this in and delete all of these annotations. Now, you can have a DTO that is a, the exact same as your actual club, and you can change it later down the line. That's kind of like the beauty of DTO. So while it is best case, and it is kind of one of the reasons you would make an actual DTO where there is fields being hidden, a lot of times you don't actually have to, and a lot of times times it's better just to make the DTO ahead of time so that you don't have to worry about taking everything out later. Okay, so that's going to be the video for today. Next, we're going to be moving on to services. Hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, make sure to smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.